This year, I decided to transplant the large roots of a few runner bean plants that I'd grown in one of the outside gardens last year into one of my polytunnels. I wanted to see how many beans these plants would produce when grown from overwintering roots like this, and to see how early I could get a crop of beans when growing in the shelter of a polytunnel. Most of the plants grew really quickly and produced a huge number of flower trusses, and with excellent pollination, lots of beans started to form, and it looked like there was going to be an excellent crop. But suddenly the flowers stopped leading to pods, and the enormous harvest of beans that I was anticipating failed to appear for some reason. I have been growing runner beans in the outside gardens for many years, and have usually harvested lots of beans in the summer and autumn from these vigorous plants. I usually grow these as annual plants, sowing seeds every spring or early summer, but they are actually perennial plants and will apparently continue to grow for several seasons, though generally not in our climate. Years ago I tried to overwinter a few of these plants for a second season in a polytunnel, but I didn't get a great yield the next year, and I thought it was due to a lack of pollination, but I decided to try again this year. Late last autumn, I dug up five roots from plants that were direct sown in one of the outside gardens, and transplanted the large roots into grow bags, and moved them under cover to overwinter and protect them from the frost. In the spring, the roots started to regrow, some of them with multiple shoots, but others with only one or two shoots. In the middle of April, I transplanted them into the central bed of one of the larger polytunnels, near the end doors, so that they would be more likely to be visited by pollinating insects. And I gave each plant a fair amount of space, as I anticipated they would grow to become quite large plants. By the beginning of June, the vines had climbed up the twine to reach the top of the polytunnel, with lots of flowers blossoming on the flower trusses, and the first pods were starting to form. And there seemed to be a few bumblebees in the polytunnel visiting many of the flowers to help with the pollination. Each runner bean flower has both male and female parts, and although they don't need pollen transferred from one flower to the next, the flowers need to be triggered in order to ensure the pollen was transferred inside the flower. The bees seem to do this when they push the petals apart to get at the nectar at the base of the flower. And it's apparently possible to do this by hand, by gently pulling on the upper and lower petals to separate them, which seems to cause the inner part of the flower to unspiral, releasing the pollen. So I did a lot of this hand pollination every day for a few weeks to help the bumblebees to see if it was possible to get full pollination of all of the flowers. And if most of the flowers did end up producing a bean, there would have been a huge harvest, as there were a lot of flowers and flower trusses, more than I would normally expect. These flower trusses can be very long, but with only two or three flowers opening each day. I assume the flowers need to be triggered or pollinated on the day that they open, as they start to shrivel up on the following day. And a few days later, the wilted remains of the flowers would fall off to reveal the tiny start of the bean pod, but a lot of the time the flowers fall off leaving just the remains of the stem. In all the years of growing these beans outside, I've never seen a full truss of beans formed. There often seems to be only four or six beans forming on each truss, often quite close together, and the rest of the flowers fail to produce a pod. This wasn't so much of an issue as the plants generally produce a lot of beans despite this, but getting a lot more per plant would mean I could harvest more than enough beans from a smaller area, leaving more space for other crops. I hadn't thought about this issue too much, as apparently it is fairly common, and I just assumed that it was an issue with pollination, that the bees were distracted by flowers in other parts of the garden and in the surrounding area. I was quite pleased that as the days passed, more and more little pods were forming, and I could not find an empty stem on any of the trusses I examined, so there seemed to have been full pollination. And there was already up to 10 to 12 beans on some of the trusses I looked at, with a lot more flowers to come. But then, in the middle of June, I noticed the first empty stem, and more appeared over the next few days, and it seemed to be the same on all the trusses I looked at on the different plants. But I had still been hand pollinating a lot of the flowers, and there were still a few busy bumblebees working through the plants every day. So the pollination had not changed, but the pods were not developing, and this continued, with each flower opening and then dropping off a few days later, until all the flowers on the truss were finished and still no new pods. And while this was happening, some of the smaller beans that had initially formed seemed to stop growing and wilt until they fell off. It was as if the plant suddenly decided that they had produced enough, or too much, and then aborted quite a few of the beans that had already started to form. And on many clusters, only three to five beans ended up growing to full size, which is very similar to what I had come to expect. 
Runner beans failing to set pods seems to be a fairly common issue, with a number of different reasons being given for it. One of the main reasons offered by many of the websites that I looked at is a lack of pollination, either because there are not enough pollinators around or that they were distracted by other flowers nearby. But this wasn't the case with this crop, as the bumblebees were there every day and I had continued with the hand pollination. Very hot weather can apparently be an issue, especially at night, as it can prevent the pollen from forming. But this was not the case, as the weather was fairly typical at that time with overnight temperatures of around 10 degrees Celsius. Some types of bees will apparently dig a hole in the outside of the flower to rob the nectar without pollinating it. I have seen this happening on broad or fava beans in the past, but I didn't notice it at all on these runner bean plants. It is also thought that not harvesting the pods soon enough and letting some of them form seeds can inhibit further pod production, but the plants were only just starting to produce full-size beans and I was harvesting them all. More recently, I have left quite a few pods on the plants to save seeds from, but the plants continue to produce new trusses with additional pods, so this doesn't seem to be the issue. The soil in this garden is really good, producing an abundance of very big and vigorous plants, so I don't think there is an issue with fertility or growing conditions. It is possible that the fast-growing courgette or zucchini plants in the adjacent beds were starting to compete with the runner beans for fertility, which may have stressed the plants, leading them to stop forming pods. Because these plants had been transplanted with mature roots, the ends of which would have been cut or broken off in the process, it's possible that the plants didn't develop a strong and deep root system again. This could have left them less able to forage for nutrients in competition with the aggressive and widespreading roots of the courgette plants. But I think a poor root system would more likely lead to an issue of not being able to get enough water. I had been watering this polytunnel, but looking back at the records, perhaps not enough, as I hadn't yet increased the amount and frequency of watering to respond to the warmer condition and larger plants. This could definitely have caused stress in the plants, especially if they didn't have deep tap roots to pull up moisture from further down in the soil. And a lack of water could have triggered the plants to not let any more pods form on the existing trusses, and to even abandon some of the existing pods, in an effort to conserve resources for a reduced number of pods. If this had been the case, then additional watering at the right time could have seen a lot more beans being produced, and the yield would have been quite a bit bigger, and it would have continued to increase for a while, rather than peaking and falling off so quickly. But I'm not fully convinced by this. More water probably would have been better, as not enough water is often a contributing factor with a lot of issues with crops, and these beans seem to like a lot of water. But I don't think I've ever seen a truss with more than six or seven developed runner beans on it in all of the years that I've been growing this vegetable, and typically there is only three to five beans, even though there is often 20 to 30 flowers. And this seems to be consistently the case in very different seasons, even when we have quite wet summers when soil moisture is abundant. And I've noticed that it's usually the first bunch of flowers on a truss that form beans, with the rest of the flowers failing to set. If intermittent germination was an issue, then I would expect a more random pattern of beans forming. It is of course possible that a number of different things could cause the pods to fail to set, and every year something like this happens. But I wonder if it is simply that the beans have been bred to produce way too many flower trusses, and the plants simply cannot produce beans from all of these flowers. I really felt this at the beginning of the season with this crop of overwintering beans. There seemed to be way too many trusses on the plants, and a disproportionate number of flowers compared to the amount of leaves. At some point, it seems that these plants decide to stop producing more pods, even though the flowers continue, and with better care and condition, perhaps this point would be delayed, allowing more pods to form, but eventually it will come. Or at least that is what I feel is the case, and I am going to be more observant of these crops in the future. Some of these overwintering plants in this polytunnel are continuing to produce flowers and develop pods, with a similar gap appearing in the trusses again, and one of the plants has partially died back for some reason. But I don't expect a huge harvest from these plants, especially as I've decided to let a lot of the pods grow to save seeds. It will be interesting to see how these plants continue to grow for the rest of the season, and I'm planning to let a few of them overwinter again in the same spot, to see how they grow next year for the third season. And I wonder if I'll ever end up seeing a runner bean truss where all the flowers end up producing pods.